All right. Hello and welcome to this little special episode. We got something really neat to promote here uh, that's coming up. And I wanted to bring Christina and Robert here to discuss what's going on in Florida in November that a lot of you might be interested in joining. So before we tell you all about it, first, uh, hello and good morning to Christina and Robert. How are y'all doing today? I'm Hi. Doing well. Hi, Kyle. Well, I, I'm super glad to have you. We actually... Uh, We'll just we'll just uh, cut it loose here. So it's the recurring revenue retreat. Uh, two years ago, y'all had it. Nobody invited me, so I didn't get to come. Uh, but last year, I was invited and was planning on going, and then COVID hit and uh, didn't get to do it. Uh, but this year, it looks like it's back on. So that's exactly what we're here to talk about today. So I guess the first thing, let's just kind of get a general idea exactly what's going on and what is the recurring revenue retreat. So Christina, why don't you sum it up for us? Uh, Tell us what, what people got to look forward to. Sure. So I'll give you a little history on how this came together. Robert and I have been have known each other through business groups for a few years now. And at some point we started talking about how we felt there really wasn't any type of conference that one was dedicated to recurring revenue. I mean, there was a lot of specific WordPress conferences, skills, you know, um, marketing specifics, but nothing around recurring revenue. So that was one thing. We felt, why isn't there anything like that? And second, we wanted something where people could bring their spouses, their partners, their children, and actually make attending a business event and a learning event something that you could also do with your family. Because as we know, it's usually a tax write-off. Yeah. Um, I have a little asterisk there. I'm not a CPA. Um, and so people can use that money that they spend for their business and learning and going, but also spending time and turning it into a vacation. Because most of us you know, most of us work from home with our families and, you know, it's, it's easy for us to kind of get away with our families. So those are the two driving forces behind it. Um, Rob, so our 2019 event was at Disney World and Robert, if you don't know Robert, he's just kind of synonymous with Disney World, him and his wife spent an entire year living in the resorts and the parks and he can mention that. So our first, our first and, and kind of the whole goal of recurring revenue retreat was kind of to always keep it around Disney World. Um, unfortunately, this year, Disney is not holding events. So uh, the Recurring Revenue Retreat is a th three day, we'll say three day because it's included um, a couple nights at the hotel, uh, all about recurring revenue to listen to speakers as they share their experience as a business focused on recurring revenue, uh, give people ideas of the ways in which they can create it, increase it. If you wanted to start a new idea or create it in your agency, and then we also have these special groups and where you break out into what we call magic minds and um, workshop whatever idea you're thinking about with a smaller group of eight people and a facilitator. So yes, it's, it's focused specifically on that, but it's more than that. And I'll let Robert talk a little bit more about like the networking aspect and the all-inclusive piece of it. Yeah, yeah. So Robert, yeah. Why, don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about how it works and what will be going on while, uh, while uh, the event's going on? Sure. So like Christina said, uh, we did do the first one in 2019. Absolutely loved it. And the thing that really stood out to us, other than the amazing speakers we had, we had a great keynote, had some awesome speakers, was the networking opportunity. We didn't really anticipate how valuable the networking would be. We thought it would be a good you know, piece of it, but we didn't realize it was going to be such a driving force to the point that after it was over, we basically retooled the entire structure of the conference tickets, as well as the sessions to introduce the magic mind, which is essentially little mastermind sessions, and then also uh, include more networking events like dinners and mixers, things like that, because we saw so much come out of this with business partnerships and ideas and people working together and helping each other that we wanted to make sure we could continue that and encourage it. So this year, because like she said, we can't do it at Disney, we have found a second alternative option Personally, I'm not as crazy about it because I am a little crazy about Disney. If you see the castle and Mickey and Walt Disney and like all the stuff around me, yeah. So a little bit crazy about Disney, but I'm totally okay with this option because it is an all-inclusive resort here in Florida where I live. So I'm super excited about that because it means everything is included. Your food's included, your drinks included, your alcohol is included, everything the entire time you're here for the conference. So what we did is we didn't want to take the traditional route that conferences take where you purchase the ticket to the conference, then you have to purchase a room at the host hotel and all this other stuff. We include the hotel with it. And because the hotel is all inclusive, that means everything is included for your stay. So the conference starts on a Wednesday night. We have just a reception welcoming everyone there. You get your hotel room for Wednesday night. We have sessions on Thursday and Friday. So you have a hotel room for Thursday night and also for Friday night. 
And then Saturday morning, we're just going to do a kind of optional breakfast where everyone can meet up together and say goodbye before they leave and check out of the hotel there. So three nights at the all-inclusive resort. And you do have the option to add on at a discounted rate if you'd like to stay longer or check in beforehand. Uh, a lot of people took advantage of that with Disney sticking around and going to the parks. And then I also know a couple of people are at least planning on staying for this year's because it's an all-inclusive resort. You can just kind of hang out and chill for a few days. Yeah, absolutely. So that, yeah, I think uh, the email y'all sent me had, had a subject line about tacos and tacos being included. So I'm there. If tacos are included. So we needed to I, convince I, you. Yeah, yeah. Unlimited tacos. <laughs> Yeah, that does it for me. So, so let's uh, let's talk about exactly what what's going to be talked about in the conference. So, I think a lot of times when we talk about recurring revenue in the context of the admin bar, we're talking about care plans or other things that are just really WordPress or or web design specific. Christina, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the topics that are going to be covered and the ideas and the whole thought about breaking this separate from just web design WordPress? Here's a, a an alternative word camp to something yeah, specific exactly. about. Uh, recurring yeah. revenue. That's the idea is that is that we're so fixated on the small little idea of what recurring revenue is possible with an agency that the idea of the talks is to kind of break out of that and look at the innovative ways that people have created recurring revenue. And that could be with digital products. It could be with, you know, services. It can be with, you know, websites as a service and care plans and online courses and training. And, um, you know, we have amazing speakers like Chris Lemma, who has created a lot of different types of recurring revenue and speaking on that all the time. We have Corey Miller who created iThemes. You know, so we have a lot of product creators, um, Brian Castle, Nathan Ingram, who's done it with training. We, we have all different types. And so you can kind of walk in there with an idea of where you have recurring revenue now or where you want to add it and then be hearing some of these speakers talk about their experiences and and get this like nugget of an idea that you're like oh wait a minute I never thought about that before and that's that is what happened on our inaugural event a lot of people walked out of there with kind of going one path and then realizing they should shift to another um, we also have um, Hans from Termageddon a lot of people know Hans in this group and you know Hans is so when you get him talking about the way that he created Termageddon, um, you begin to see the ways in which you're like, oh, wait, I can take this idea that I have and I can grow it and nurture it this way, but I need X, Y, and Z answered. And that's where we go to that networking piece of it. Because unlike other events, you have your sponsors and you have your speakers and you have your attendees and they don't mix. With R3, we all mix. And that is a big kind of value to the event that we throw. We want everybody on the same level. We're all this, we're all humans and we're all doing our thing. And so if you can go to an event and actually sit down with one of the speakers or sitting next to one of the sponsors and just start talking with them and everybody's approachable, everybody's staying at the same resort, everyone's going to the same events, it brings like it to a whole new level. And what we ended up finding too from our sponsors is they realized they actually got not just people signing up for whatever they were, you know, you know, selling at the court at the mm -hmm. event or whatever they were marketing, but they actually got brand ambassadors because you got to know them. Mm -hmm. And so you got to hang out with them. You got to see them as people. And we ended up getting, you know, them walking away being like, that was an amazing event because we actually got people who fell in love with not just the product, but like us as a business and they actually go out to be brand ambassadors. So um, that's kind of the spirit of it all. And so it's more than just, it's more than just going in and saying, I need to learn more about how to run my care plans, but uh, going in and being like, I could do so much more with this and I can sit down with Christina and I can actually ask her a few questions and she'll answer them <laughs> and I will. <laughs> um, so it's, it's more about that, the approach, approachable being one and just having no ego. We say we're the event with no ego. Yeah, I've definitely been to the WordCamp type events where uh, there's a huge line to talk to the speaker after the after the talk. And it's just like, yeah, I'm probably not worth going up there or saying anything. I think uh, when we had WordCamp here in Dallas last time, uh, Chris Lemma came and talked and everywhere he went, there was just a line following him of people <laughs> wanting to talk to him. So I never even got to speak to him. So uh, I really like that aspect of it. So I think, uh, Christina, you've been on our podcast and, and inside the group several times before, and we really know you as the care plan person. So I understand a lot of your relationship with recurring revenue uh, probably comes from that place. But Robert, why don't you tell us a little bit about your relationship with recurring revenue and why you, you wanted to get involved and start this project? 
Yeah. So um, recurring revenue changed my life. Uh, I quit my job at an agency with uh, about $400 a month in recurring revenue locked up. Uh, wasn't planning on quitting that soon, but it was kind of uh, things came to a head at the agency. So I immediately re realized I've got to figure something out if I'm going to pay the bills and recurring revenue is the way to do that. So it just kind of so happened that I was in the right place at the right time with um, Facebook group and I, my specialty is SEO. That's what I've been doing for the last almost 10 years, I guess. And um, I started helping other agencies kind of understand how to offer some SEO services. And they turned around and said, well, how about you just do them? And I pay you and you just white label it. So I was like, okay. So I started doing that and that became my core business. It still is today. I've got about 80% of my business is uh, white label with a couple different agencies that I um, have clients through. And that's SEO is my specialty. It's what I like to focus on. We also, of course, have our own websites. We build occasionally for clients. We do care plans and the like, but all of that, the care plans, the SEO, and even PPC stuff enabled me to, yes, sell everything we owned because it was part of the process, but we got rid of everything, moved to Walt Disney World, and lived in the resorts at Walt Disney World for an entire year. And the only way that was possible is because I had recurring revenue coming in every single month, and I could project out and see even though we don't have the money to start the year to pay for everything, as the year goes on, I'll at least be able to pay for things as we go. And obviously I was working the entire year as well. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't a year long vacation. I was working the whole time. Yeah. And it, it, you know, even in the short, I've only been in the WordPress space for, I don't know, four and a half years now, but it seems like even in, in that amount of time, there's been a lot more shift towards, I guess the whole world more towards subscription model things. But in our industry, a lot of people really, uh, focusing in on recurring revenue. And, and for me, you know, when I left, uh, my job and quit kind of similar to how you did, uh, you know, I, I had a benchmark there for how much I needed to be making every month that I could count on before I could even, uh, you know, discuss doing that. And then as my agency's grown, I mean, recurring revenue for me, not only does it help pay the bills and things like that, but for me, it's allowed me to work on the jobs that I want to work on because I know I have this much coming in every month. So I don't have to take everything that comes in the door. You know, I can be a little bit more picky about this or that and take on the projects uh, that add to that recurring revenue over time or the kinds of projects that, that excite me about it. And what I really like is how many people are coming up with ways it doesn't have to just be care plans. It's not just updating plugins, you know, SEO as an ongoing service is a great example of that. Another way um, you can bring in more steady income into your business. Yeah. So, so let's talk about, um, let's talk about the actual, I think people, uh, people have a good idea of, of the recurring revenue part of it and uh, have been to talks and stuff before. Let's talk a little bit about how this is different than going to a, a word camp and an event you go to and, and leave. This is a resort. So Robert, you've been there. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the actual resort and what people can look forward to as the vacation side of it? Yeah, I went down and checked it out uh, a few weeks ago whenever we were about to sign the contract. I said, okay, you know what? It's two and a half hours from Orlando where I live. So I'm going to drive down there I want to see it in person before the pictures you never know on the website right with the pictures so we got there and got to see a couple of the rooms that we'd be staying in as well as the entire property and just absolutely love the resort they've got several different uh pools around there because they have an adult only pool as well as like family friendly pools there tons of places to get food and drinks there's little bars dotted around the property as well as places to pick up food while you're there and they have a beach area. Now that's not on the coast. So it's not like you've got the ocean front. It's a little bay area, but on the beach there, they have things like the um, uh, windsurfing where you have the board with the sail on it and they've got kayaks and all this stuff that you can use for free, which is great. And then tons of other recreational stuff like tennis courts and soccer fields and all that stuff. Um, but as I was there walking around, I realized like this is, I think I'm gonna add on a few days myself because it's, it's two and a half hour drive, but if we can go down a few days early and just relax before the conference, I think I'm totally going to do that because it was definitely the place that I would be considering going on vacation as someone who lives by Disney World and goes there all the time. Sure. And especially with the, the dates, uh, I'm sure I'll have all of this in the description of whatever you're watching, but the dates of it are November 17th through 20th. Uh, and depending on where you are in the country right now, that's typically a pretty cold, nasty time of the year. So I imagine the uh, weather in Florida in November is still pretty awesome. Which yep, is one of the reasons. Is 
Yeah, we did August for our inaugural event and it was a little hot. So it was very hot. <laughs> I can tell you one place to never come in August and that's Texas. Please do not come <laughs> to true. Texas in August. So Christina, you mentioned about this being more geared towards people who have families if they want to bring mm -hmm. the family. So tell us a little bit about how those options work. Do the do families need to be coming to events? Can they just hang out at the hotel? How does all that work? So typically um, what we structure the talks in a way that uh, they kind of end a little earlier so people can get out and kind of spend some time with their family. So if they want to do a magic mind, they can. The talks typically end, you know, after lunch. And so if you want to stick around for the magic mind, you can. But if you actually want to go and spend time with your family and not do that, you can do that as well. So the two days of talks end right after lunch to give that flexibility to families, depending upon what people want to do. You can add on a spouse for a very affordable price. And yes, they're all included, food's included um, as well. And then you can add on kids for a really affordable price, again, all inclusive. So then, you know, I was like that because I never know how much my children are going to eat or not eat. So <laughs> I don't want to worry about that. Um, but you're hoping that whoever is coming with you can kind of hang out with the children while you're doing the talk so that the room can kind of stay quiet and not have the kids in the room. Sure. But certainly, um, you know, afterwards we had, you know, a few families that had their kids kind of going around the resort and you could meet the families and you could meet people and see them in a new light and meet their spouse. So that was really nice. A lot of my students, I could actually see, you know, and actually meet their whole family, which was really cool. Uh, so there's that flexibility, meaning it's, they're welcome. They're welcome to, to kind of be there. Um, we do try to keep the, the room for the talks nice and quiet, but um, as far as the events that we have, I, uh, we didn't in, uh, did, we, did we have the add-on for the Wednesday reception for any partners or spouses that wanted to come, Robert? I'm trying to remember if we uh, had Wednesday time. reception's open for anyone that's there. For anyone. Yeah. yeah. So the, same, with, same with the after party as well. Yes. Yes. So anyone, so you guys can bring your children and your partners and everybody to any of the events afterwards, which again is a nice way to humanize it a little bit more and, you know, meet people in their environment. And, and also I really liked it because it was a way for my husband to meet all these people that I've been talking about or working with. And he, he saw me in a new light and he was able to see kind of what I do in a new light. So I, I was really enjoyable to have him there and then get to meet, you know, all these people I talk to virtually and he has no idea I work with. <laughs> so. And we might, you might need to put like a support group together for the spouses of the people attending the retreat so they can all talk smack about us. They're like, oh, that's yeah. how this works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, pro tip. I just approached my wife and said, hey, would you like to go to Florida in November on a little vacation, just me and you? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, and we can write most of it off because it'll be a business trip, asterisk. Um, and she's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So uh, yeah. that definitely works if you just kind of approach it that way. And then you can throw in, well, I'm going to be at some meetings and stuff, but it's a a pretty good little vacation, I would say. Yeah, we do have some people who came to our inaugural event who are coming now who are huge Disney fans. And so they are going to bookend it. They're going to come and they're, you know, going to go to the parks before or after because it's only a two and a half hour drive. So we do have those two that are going to make it a little bit longer vacation with their families. So, so that's always a possibility. So I guess one other question I'm sure people are going to have, um, and Robert, you're probably best positioned to answer this because you're in Florida. Obviously, uh, here recently with the CDC guidelines, they've basically said if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. And if you're not, you do. Um, obviously, this is going to be an in-person event. None of us have been to those in quite a while. So um, the event's still a few months out at this point. But what do you kind of uh, anticipate going on as far as from the restrictions we've been under and what you see uh, happening in the group. And also if, if things go south again, God forbid, knocking on wood, uh, is there any kind of refund policy for the tickets or anything like that? Yep. So that was something we talked about ad nauseum before actually booking this thing, trying to figure out how to make this make sense and safe for everyone. So um, obviously like legal disclaimer and all that, you have to follow all state, local and federal guidelines and the resort will have rules in place. You have to follow those as well. As of now, the only restrictions in place are put in place by the resort itself. And it is, you have to wear a mask when you're indoors, but you don't have to wear one when you're outdoors. And they are anticipating that changing in the near future based on the recent guidance that's been announced. But so far they haven't changed that. I personally don't expect to be wearing masks or anything like that when it comes time for it to uh, the conference to get here. I also don't expect, unless something goes, you know, everything goes south, I don't expect any other kind of restrictions or you know, vaccination requirements, any of that stuff. 
just because they're not really that strict on things in that particular county here in Florida. As far as if things get worse, hopefully not, um, we do have a refund policy in place. Uh, obviously, if the event is canceled, uh, we'll refund everything. But if the event does go forward, your tickets are fully refundable through July 31st. And that is when we have to kind of lock in our number with, um, with the resort and give them a, a final number of people that are going to be there. And then if you don't refund your ticket before July 31st and you aren't able to come, your ticket is still transferable through the middle of September when we actually have to finalize the names on all the rooms. So all the way through September 14th, you have an out if something happens and you know, you're not able to attend the conference. After that, um, it is not refundable because the resort has already taken all of our money and won't refund us either. Sure. Okay, so uh, tickets, I'm guessing, are on sale now. Is that correct, Christina? Can you give us all the, the dates we need to be aware of? Yes. Um, so right now we have an early bird special to June 15th. And so we even provided the admin bar a special admin bar code so your awesome, awesome audience can apply a code to the early bird special, stack it, uh, like stack it like a taco and try and get lock in that uh, really discounted price. Do you like that? Right? I like it. Robert. And then after June 15th, Robert, when does, uh, what happens then? So after June 15th, our next price increase will be uh, July 31st. And that's when it goes up to full, full price. So you've got up through June 15th and the price goes up a little bit more before the final increase at the end of July. Okay, and how late can people plan? If they're still worried about uh, COVID or things like that, they can't make the plans yet, how late can they still buy tickets? Uh, as of now, our cutoff is the middle of September, but we are also limiting the number of tickets just because of the physical space we have. Uh, for the event, our event, um, like our conference room space. So if we reach that number before that, we'll have to cut off ticket sales. Okay, awesome. Well, is there anything else uh, we didn't get to that you, you guys wanted to make sure to cover in this call? Uh, I have one thing, I've Bye. got one thing I thought of, and it is, um, you mentioned bringing your spouse, bringing your family. If you are not bringing your spouse or family, we do offer a roomie ticket where you can have a roommate that is attending the conference. So it's cheaper to bring your spouse if they're not attending. It's a little bit cheaper because there's no conference costs involved. But if they are coming to the conference, there is an add-on when you purchase your ticket for it's about half price on the ticket. You can have someone share the room with you. And so it'll make it a little cheaper for you and them if you're splitting it that way. But I think that's all I got. Yeah, that's perfect. I think uh, I, there's plenty of people that might want to go hang out and share a room. That's not a not a bad idea too. So I'm glad. Yeah, that's it brings the cost down if they do the roomy. Mm -hmm. yeah, just be careful about who you're sharing a room with, right? <laughs> Got to watch out about the people in the admin bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome guys. I am really, really looking forward to this. Uh, it, I was telling you before the call, my it'll be my first real trip to Florida. Uh, I've been in the Miami airport to just hop onto another flight, but my first real trip to Florida, I know we have some people, uh, in Florida and in the South that are fairly close and could probably make this a drive. Um, but honestly, um, I was looking at plane tickets. We're taking a trip to California here next month. And then uh, this trip to Florida in November and plane tickets are still really affordable. Uh, and this all inclusive trip is actually pretty affordable too. Uh, I'll let you click the link wherever you're seeing this video and you can go through all the pricing and stuff. Uh, I'm sure I'll be resharing this video. So I don't want to date anything by mentioning all that, but you can go to rrretreat.live and and get all the information there and there'll be updates on all the speakers and events and everything there uh, going forward. And if we have anything else to update, if Robert or Christina have some uh, additions they want to make, I'll make sure to uh, to add those to this as well. So I really appreciate y'all coming on here and telling us all about this. But what I really appreciate is the invite to come this time, because I'm looking forward to, uh, to head it out and actually doing something in person again. Oh, we look forward to it, Kyle. We can't wait to meet you in person and you're hang gonna out be and so have a lot disappointed. Of fun. So disappointed. <laughs> It'll be a lot shorter than I think. Uh, well, or you're I'm gonna about, be taller than I think. I'm about six two, almost six three. Oh, you're gonna be a lot taller than you're I taller think. Taller than I thought. Oh yeah. wow. Yep. I'm, no, I had that all wrong. I, I'm a pretty big guy, so uh <laughs> you'll see me coming for sure. The, the taco people will see me coming. It no is doubt. weird because we know people by their Facebook profile pictures. Sure, and so it's yeah. always like you do this little dance in your head where you're like, I think that's so-and-so. I'm the body type that avoids taking full body shot photos and posting them online. So that, uh, that'll give you a good idea. 
All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it so much. And if anybody has any questions, you can reach out to Christina or Robert or myself, Mm -hmm. and I'll put them in contact with you. And I hope to see you all in Florida in November. So we will uh, catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.